Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And welcome to the Temple of Light, to those in the sanctuary and those who are joining us online. Welcome to our hearts and to our love stream this morning. And please join me in this Good opening night. affirmative night. prayer. One perfect cause, omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent. And we know that this one expresses as each and every one here today, as each and every one tuning into this service, in the sanctuary, online, or in consciousness. So we know that this service this morning is a perfect expression of a perfect idea in the mind of this one. So we know that this service this morning is spiritually enriching. It is uplifting. It is wonderful. And I know that our speaker this morning, Reverend Han, allows herself to be a clear and open channel for the expression of this one. So we know that everyone who participates today is truly blessed and is a blessing to everyone who they meet. So it is with great joy that I release these words into the perfect law that make it so. And so it is. Today's inspirational reading is from this month's Science of Mind magazine, Guide for Spiritual Living, and it's written by our spiritual leader, Dr. Villarin, and it's entitled, Your Love. The fire that we call loving is too strong for human minds, but just right for human souls. And that is from Abba Jani. book, The ele Elemental, it's entitled, The Power of Illuminated Love. Have enthusiasm, and above all, have a consciousness of love, a radiant feeling flowing through your consciousness at all times. And that is from our founder, Ernest Holmes. And that is from our textbook, The Sands of Mind, and it's on page 440. There is a presence permeating all creation. It is creative intelligence an infinite consciousness we call spirit within. Its nature is love. It is quietly, calmly at rest at the center of our being. Or we can say in the depth of our being, it's in every one of us, regardless of what storm we are currently enduring. There is this something that is not touched by outer circumstances. Some call this presence the Lord. Some call it divine presence or the divine mother. Some call it intuition or love. And some say that when we mindfully pause to recognize and to step toward it, it takes 10 steps towards us as if we are waiting for the opportunity to respond. Perhaps this is why it is written that love bear all things. Opes all things, endures all things. It's in us, it awaits our recognition and while it waits, the presence within whispers, peace, be still. Today, so the affirmation, and you can just repeat after me. Today, I turn to the presence of love within me. Today, I turn to the presence of love within me. And listen to its invitation to be peaceful. And so it is. 
So please join me for our praise song. And the audience in the sanctuary, you can stand. Please be seated. And now we're going to do the prayer of our center. The prayer of our center. The Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living is a sacred field embodying our spiritual community from which the Christ, peace, love, and joy emanate to touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper and to liberate anyone who comes into contact with it in any way. The light of the Christ illumines us, our center and our environment. Our spiritual community is filled with and surrounded by the presence of God and it's growing from strength to strength. The power of God expands our consciousness of truth guiding us ceaselessly along the paths of wisdom, spiritual growth, unfoldment, and attainment. We are blessed, and to God be the honor and the glory forever. And so it is. We'll now have the lighting of the candle for the youth and all the people of the world. So to our youth, we love you, we appreciate you, we salute the Christ in you, and we see you a shining light onto your world, and God is blessing you now, and so it is. And of course, that goes out to everyone. And now we're going to have our mission song.
Reverend John always says. <laughs> and now it is time for our announcement. Our flowers this morning. So our sanctuary is beginning to look a lot like Christmas with blooming poncetters given by our floral angels. Thank you, ladies. They are beautiful. <laughs> you are invited to spend a few quiet moments in the garden with Reverend John every Monday morning at 6 p.m., sorry, 6 a.m., 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Facebook Live. And please join us again on Facebook Live for our Spiritual Mind Healing Service on Tuesday, December 15th at 6 p.m. That is now 6 p.m. And this week, our speaker will be practitioner Carol Campbell. On Sunday, December 20th, our pastor, Reverend John Scott, will be the speaker with host, host practitioner, practitioner Sandra, Sandra Cooper. Service services at the, at the temple. Please remember, remember to call our office, office at 876-946-2230 if you are intending to attend our Sunday celebration in person. As you know, congregants attending must wear a face mask and observe the prescribed protocols. Please also remember to maintain physical distancing and to leave the premises as quickly as possible after the service. If you can't bless us with your presence on a Sunday, you can still be with us in consciousness as our services continue to be live streamed on Facebook Live. Classes. Our Thursday morning class called Mental Equivalent with Reverend John Scott continues this week from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. On Thursday evenings at 7 to 9 p.m., join Reverends Anshand and Sonia Davidson for the series of classes titled Revealing Wholeness on the Zoom platform. Classes cost Jamaican $1,600 per class for non-members and Jamaican $1,200 for members. Class fees are payable at the office or to our savings account, number 20941 at the Bank of Nova Scotia, Knoxford Boulevard. Please register by emailing or by calling the office at 876-946-2230. Discovery. Join Reverend Michael Record on Facebook Live at 10.30 a.m. this morning for discovery, the lively conversation of matters of interest to truth seekers. Today's topic will be all I want for Christmas. <laughs> and that should be very interesting. I'll now ask practitioner, as we're talking about Christmas, ask practitioner Jennifer Livingston, who we call Livy Jen, to tell us about our Christmas luncheon. luncheon. Thank you, Vance. Good morning, friends. Um, just wanted to say on behalf of the organization Quadrant of the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, our sincere thanks and appreciation to all of you who supported us at our Everyday a Christmas Luncheon this year that was held on Friday, December 4th. I'd also like to extend an apology because there were some logistics mishaps, but we overcame those and the, the luncheon was a success. So to all of you, and very specially, I'm gonna name a few congregants who are not members of the quadrant, but who helped to make it a success. And so I'd like to specially thanks, thank Carmen Clark, Jeannie Slow, uh, Yvonne Carty, and our own Janet Morris Henry from the office, who was instrumental in selling tickets for us. So let's give them a round of applause for doing that. And so once we make our report to the council, we'll give you a report on how much we made, but thank you again for your tremendous support. Look forward to you supporting us next year, as also our Everyday a Christmas Bazaar will be back in full force. Until then, 
Thank you so much. And now, we talk about our summit. And folks on our mailing list will shortly be receiving the completed report on our summit, as well as this beautiful, I don't know if you can see it, the people online will get a better view of it. That's the front, and this is the back. So you will all be getting you'll all be getting this beautiful booklet. There's also a copy in our book room, and be sure to pass it on and look through it. Also, we want to thank all the innovation groups coming out of the summit, and if you are not part of one, please try and get in touch and join one. And these are Tech Action, and you'll be seeing some of the innovations coming out of that group very shortly. Culture, financial sustainability, and we're starting to see work from that group also. Well, all groups, education and curriculum, governance, and youth. So please get involved in our innovation groups coming out of our summit. Now, Christmas and New Year's services. This year, there'll be no Christmas Eve service, but we'll be celebrating Christmas on Christmas Day at 7.30 a.m. The following Sunday, December 27th, will be Practitioner's Sunday. Please don't miss that Practitioner's Sunday. We have something special for you, but you'll have to come to find out. <laughs> our service is at 9 a.m. and as usual on December 27th. We'll also be having a New Year's Eve service online only, and that is from 11 p.m. on December 31st. Prayer power. You are invited to enjoy an hour of fellowship on Thursdays from 6 p.m., to 7 p.m. Prayer power is a circle of prayer whose purpose it is to facilitate spiritual growth. Anyone is free to participate and experience the benefits of spontaneous prayer. Prayer power also utilizes Zoom, so you need to let us know so we can send you the link. Prayer support. We continue to respond with prayer to the challenges of this special time. A practitioner is available to pray with you during a 15-minute period immediately following our services every Sunday. The practitioner on duty today is Carol Charlton, and the number is 876-289-0907. Also, you can listen to an inspiring prayer by calling our prayer line, 876 978 one one six seven, and if you wish to speak in person to one of our ministers, they may be reached at eight seven six two eight nine zero nine zero seven from eight a.m. to twelve midnight Monday to Friday. You can also phone in prayer requests into our offices at eight seven six nine two seven six one four five or eight seven six. 9462230 or you can email us at templeoflight at cwjamaica.com you may drop off your prayer request tithes offering and set appointments for practitioner assistance if you feel moved to support our ministry of love and light your loving gifts may be transferred to our savings account number 20 941 at the Bank of Nova Scotia, New Kingston branch. Viewers who join us on Facebook Live, please visit the Home tab on our Facebook page and you will find the link to our PayPal Donate button. 
It's in the top pools. If you are worshiping with us in person, there is a basket on either side of the podium in which you can place your love offering as you exist, the sanctuary. This concludes the announcement. Please join me in singing our first hymn, Over Our Blue Mountain, on page three, and on the screen for those on Facebook. be seated. And now it's with great pleasure that I present our speaker this morning. She's truly the embodiment of peace and light and love and all that is good. I present to you our assistant minister, Reverend Ann Shand. Good morning, loved ones. Ah, everything falling apart, but we are right here. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's so good on this beautiful morning as we celebrate the coming in of Christmas that we are all here together in consciousness, those with us in the sanctuary and those on cyberspace. This morning, my theme is titled, Staying the Course. I begin my thoughts with part of an essay written by Howard Thurman, a minister, philosopher, who has been described as one of the greatest spiritual resources of North America. And I quote, Oh God, God our Father, hold us in the sweep of thy hands under the shadow of thy wing, until at last all of our anguish dies and our fears removed, and the joy of thy spirit possesses our lives. Thus we know for ourselves this day and tomorrow and tomorrow, not only that thou canst be trusted, our Father, but that life itself can be counted on." End of quote. We are held in the sweep of the hands of the Almighty until the joy of spirit possesses our lives. 
and we come to the realization that the presence of God in us, as us, can be trusted and counted on to maintain and sustain our experiences in life's upward spiraling journey of spiritual unfoldment and growth. So during this time of the year, as we contemplate things of the spirit, we must remember that, that presence that can be counted on. In the Christian calendar, this time celebrated as Advent, which comes from the Latin root Adventus, which means a coming in, a time to recognize, appreciate, take a fresh new perspective on the importance of our coming into the deepening awareness of the consciousness of the Christ principle. Our declaration of principles states it so clearly, and I quote, we believe in our own soul, our own spirit, and our own destiny, for we understand that the life of man is God, end of quote. We constantly work on our spiritual practices to come into the realization of our union with spirit. We believe in our own self as the individualization of that principle. Always eternally experiencing the presence as we, as we rise in consciousness. We are reminded in the Judah Christian Bible, beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is, end of quote. When we truly embody and become aware of the consciousness of God within, that's our divine sonship. It is out pictured in our life's unfoldment. We can count on the joy of spirit permeating the domains of our life experiences. Eric Butterworth, New Thought Luminary, shares this, and I quote, the Christ standard is not a restraint. It is an inherent potential. It is the law of man's higher self. It is the ascending urge within man that keeps him unsatisfied with what he is and does and drives him onto higher goals of living and being. True fulfillment is the goal toward which all men bend their efforts and shape their struggles and it can only be achieved through opening out a way whence the imprisoned splendor may escape, end of quote. Yes, that imprisoned splendor that flows on into our experience of lives, when our lives as we appreciate our growing awareness, our coming in of the presence of spirit in our lives. So as we allow that presence, to fill our minds, and as we truly come into our divine sonship, it allows us to bless, to prosper, to liberate, and to love. And we can trust the law of our being to demonstrate only good in our lives. So how are we directing our attention? Does our actions assist us forward in fulfilling our life's purpose? Are they meaningful, of real value? Are our actions deliberate and consistent with our unfolding evolution as spirit idea for the best of our lives? Are we staying the course in the face of challenges that have arisen? Are we demonstrating limitless living? Are we demonstrating life more abundant? Hmm. All questions. But friends, everything is significant in the unfolding of our life's purpose and the attainment of spiritual maturity. Yes, we celebrate our successes, fine. We are at one with spirit and everything is working out. But when things get uncomfortable, despair may set in. Do we acknowledge it with a view to turning the other cheek, which is, to look away to the desirable state of being. Staying the course of transformation is not the easiest thing 
to accomplish. So let us look at the beginning of Luke for answers. I speak specifically of the example of Zacharias and Elizabeth, the parents of John the Baptist. Elizabeth was also the cousin of Mary, the mother of Jesus. It starts in chapter 1, beginning at verse 5. I will summarize the story, but I'll read the verses we should pay particular attention to. Zacharias was a priest, and his wife Elizabeth was a descendant of Aaron, Moses' brother. Verse 6 reads, and I quote, And they were both righteous before God, walking in all commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. 7. And they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were now well stricken in years, end of quote. This couple followed the law of the Lord, devoted they were to prayer, and, but they were past childbearing years, but continued to pray for a child. In those days, having no children was considered a curse. As a result, was to pay for some sin committed. So let us look at that bit of information. Some of us can relate to the fact that during this year we may have had seeming unanswered prayers or demonstrations and the, possibly the thought may have crossed our mind that this is the result of some past misdeed or we did not stay the course of diligent prayer or kept the right mental pattern to facilitate the demonstration. Or we may have fallen off the spiritual path somewhere, and there's a, feelness, a feeling of numbness or dryness. So listen. Let us get back to the story. While Zacharias was in the temple burning incense, metaphysically burning incense is a delicate secret process that goes on in the body, a process of transmutation, a change, a refinement of consciousness, a process usually done by priests because it required spiritual understanding, a process that takes place in us as we offer a firm within our prayers our unity and common union with spirit. Transmutation is a change in form, nature, or substance. So transmutation takes place in us as a result of this consistent practicing of the presence through our spiritual practices. It creates a new mental paradigm that outpictures as a demonstration of good desire. So that is what burning incense means metaphysically. The psalmist amplifies this with, let your prayers be set forth before thee as incense and the lifting up of my hands as a living sacrifice. I think that, that's from Psalm 141. In other words, our prayers are likened to incense. They are the channels through which the change of consciousness represents a new mold for the desired good. And evening sacrifice is as we let go of the old way of doing things to embrace the new way of being. This reminds me of forgiveness, giving up what does not serve us to embrace what it is that we desire. The story goes on with the appearance of Gabriel, who told Zacharias of his answered prayer, and I quote, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Verse 14, and thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. But at verse 18, doubt in the demonstration was displayed by Zacharias. And I quote from him, whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, my wife stricken in years. The result of that was Zacharias was told that he would remain dumb until manifestation came forth. And that was a result of his unbelief. He didn't believe, you know. Anyway, 
Metaphysically, Zacharias represents spiritual consciousness and Elizabeth, love consciousness. Together, they represent the whole expression of what the sum total of what we believe in. Thought and feeling expressing on the spiritual plane. Elizabeth Santurner describes this, hence they were receptive to a divine idea, which was the appearance of Gabriel. However, it's like us sometimes. We are often awed by the revelation of spirit through the strong emergence of a desire in the forefront of our conscious mind. Sometimes we find it difficult to accept that we are the chosen channel through which the demonstration will be made manifest in our physical experience. We question ourselves, maybe that's too big for God. Really, me? No, sir, me can't do it. Does that ring a bell anywhere? So too was Zacharias, fearful and doubting. So he was struck down. The implication of this is that this disbelief keeps us from speaking the word. That word of thanksgiving for the desired good, I mean really believe it and give thanks and say, yes, this is my good. I put my stamp of individuality on it. So let us go back through the answered prayer for Zacharias. In the sanctuary of his inner being, he silently prayed consistently for the advent of an heir. His desired good, affirmed in prayer, diligent and receptive, in the secret place of the Most High within, was seamless. That prayer was deeply embedded, pure in its essence. It was a union of thought and feeling that feeling is a result of Elizabeth's love consciousness. It tells us that once the feeling is pure in its intention, something happens. In fact, Elizabeth literally loved her demonstration into manifestation. I go on to verses 24 and 25. And after those days, his wife conceived and hid herself for five months, saying, Thus the Lord dealt with me in the days therein. He looked on me to take away my reproach among men. End of quote. Her evidence of the pregnancy was there for everybody to see. So after the five months, she went out for everybody to see. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Anyway, Dr. Holmes made a statement that indicates the state of being necessary for demonstration. And I quote, if statements are real to the one who makes them, if he has a deep inward conviction and feeling, his statements have power, end of quote. So as we continue to stay the course of persistent prayer, this coming in of our heightened sense of the awareness of the Christ consciousness must herald the news of physical manifestation. For Zacharias, when he was able to communicate that name of his newborn son, he wrote it down at the naming ceremony. His name is John. His tongue was loosened, and he was able to praise God. Verse 68, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. End of quote. This presence, friends, can be trusted, counted on to support us and sustain us with its beneficence. Zacharias was now able to prophesy the coming of the Christ. Verse 69. And he hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. That's the Christ consciousness. So, friends, for your homework, which I don't normally give, Please read Luke 1. <laughs> and verse 79 says, To give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet in the way of peace. End of quote. This verse captures the reason why staying the course is important to the maintenance of our spiritual foundation. If we are to become complete and be blessed, our experience, our completion and fulfillment. By living in the Christ consciousness, we must develop a spiritual mindset. 
a mindset that will require both aspects of our being, our thought and fully focused emotions to ultimately achieve our true reality. We are individualizations of the God presence. We have to balance our spiritual possibilities with living in the world of material sense and still gain the level of consciousness that represents God in us, as us, in every sense of the truth of our being. We must come to trust the process and count on our evolution to achieve spiritual mastery. We are spiritual beings humanly unfolding into our true divinity. I repeat 79 again, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. This means staying the course as we deepen our immersion in the Christ consciousness, which is the light of truth that guides us unerringly to experience spirit's highest idea of our infinite potential within to heal our sense of separation from good, to realize always that the eternal perfect life of God is ours to experience. We are reminded, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. And let us always walk into paths of peace and pleasantness. This truth can be trusted and counted on. We're not doing anything by ourselves, so there is nothing to fear or doubt of myself. I do not do nothing. It is a battle within that we have to work. Something that holds our hands always. So let us trust the promise of the joy of spirit as our natural state of being. As we continue to be diligent and steadfast with our spiritual practices, and in the high point of realization that takes place as the seed of the desired good is planted in the fertile soil of mind, we can sense the union with our demonstration. In that feeling of fulfillment, we know and trust that every resource for its physical manifestation is present within the idea. This union ushers in the presence of spirit which moves upon itself by becoming the desired good and the fully orbed desire emerges in our physical space. This sacred promise happens every time within the process of demonstration. So remember, thought backed by fully focused emotions are the foundation or nucleus for the development of increased good in our lives. Universal law always works. Sometimes in the midst of doubt and fear and anxiety, the universe provides cues of affirmation and encouragement and hope, a certainty, a sense of conviction that spring forth naturally from our consciousness. Sometimes it's fleeting, you know, but you know, something brought it to your attention. Sometimes, sometimes it's an affirming lyrics of a song. It's a sunset. Something that just lets you know that you're on track. Sometimes it's a word of encouragement from a friend, as if they were reading our minds. Something we needed to hear at the right time. Inspiration that we are on the right path as we have chosen an idea for our highest good. So in this special time, let us look at probably an idea that we have held in our hearts secretly that we wish to experience. An idea that we can devote our love and attention to. Taking the time to do whatever is necessary for its fulfillment. Secondly, let us fill our minds with love, with wonder, Visualizing the joy of accomplishment, that bubbly, contagious joy that says yes to the acceptance of this good in our lives. Thirdly, every day and last thing at night, let us see ourselves sharing and serving others in the spirit of happiness and joy as we celebrate every step of our accomplishment. Giving thanks for every milestone and we can sense that anticipation of desired good. 
and let us praise the presence of spirit as we unfold into the achievement of our highest expression of an abundant life. Finally, remember Lamentations 3, 21 to 24. I feel you with Bible this morning. And I quote, This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. End of quote. So we can trust and count on the law of the Lord because great is its faithfulness. Yes, our prayers will open the way to rise transcendent over all challenges until we become fully aware of the consciousness of the Christ within that is our divine sonship. It is who we are. It is the coming in of our true reality. So this morning, I affirm for every individual on the face of this plane of existence, the continuing beneficence of love, peace, and goodwill to all. Namaste. <laughs> And our beloved Steve has sent us a gift this morning.
We thank Stevie. And remember, when you're enjoying the goodwill and the cheer this year, just remember that divine sunshine that is drawing into your lives all the love, all the peace, and then all the joy. So we'll now have Dr. Shima Davidson, <laughs> who will share her rendition for Hallelujah. Everybody in that household can sing. <laughs> Father, mother, daughter, and granddaughter. Mm. Thank you again, Shima. Can we stand for the prayer of Jamaica, please? It's on a flyer in the program. And for those watching us on the screen, it's right there. Together, the radiant light of God's love 
is now flowing through us and from us to everything and everyone it touches. The eternal light of God's love now completely fills, covers, and surrounds our island, Jamaica. The glowing intensity of the light of God's love now interpenetrates and awakens within the hearts and minds of our countrymen and women the truths of life which set free. The light of God's love is growing and glowing in intensity in the hearts and minds of mankind everywhere. Love, health, harmony, goodwill, peace, uprightness, integrity, joy, prosperity, kindness, and our oneness under God are now established, and so it is. And our second hymn, God rest ye merry gentlemen on page three. Tidings of comfort and joy, let us bless our love offering. Lovingly I give, joyfully I receive. Be thou fruitful, increase and multiply. Bless, prosper, and enrich everyone whom you touch and replenish all of my financial affairs. Thank you, Father. And so it is. Oh, as we come together in this consciousness of goodness, that consciousness that heralds, that indeed, that sense of knowing we are one with all that God is. Right where we are, each one, as we celebrate this special time knowing that as that Christ consciousness fills our lives and affairs with its peace and its joy, we indeed are open, pure channels that bless, prosper, and enlighten all who come into contact with us. So as we celebrate that divine sonship in each other, we share in the gifts of spirit, the gift of love, the gift of life, the gift of peace and power, beauty and joy. And we truly give thanks now and know that all this is so, and so it is. We'll now have our love song. Instead of peace, we'll sing love. Yes, there is love. Yes. 
give thanks for this consciousness of love that is right here in our sanctuary and in cyberspace just remember to just love up everybody this season starting with those of your household your mental thoughts and then the physical persons in your house and join us next Sunday with Reverend John and the host will be our practitioner Sandra Cooper so friends Thank you for joining us this morning. And keep the consciousness of love wherever you are. Thank you for being with us. See you next week. Same place. Oh, remember, at 10.30 we have Discovery with Reverend Michael. All I want for Christmas. Have you thought about it? Ah, prepare for 10.30. All you want for Christmas you can have. So join us at 10.30. Namaste.